surprise, obviously. I was just looking to go in and have some fun and see what would happen because I knew whatever I did, I'd always be an outsider for a medal because I was picked on a wild card chance for British swimming team. It was very good of John Atkinson to uh, select us because he saw that I could improve and I'm very grateful for that. But I was picked on a wild card, so I wasn't expected to get a medal. I wasn't expecting it myself. But um, once I was, just I, I just wanted to impress everybody and do the best I could. I was coming out for the heats. I just thought, right, I'm gonna have to. If I want to get in the final, I'm gonna have to finish in the top two to get a good lane in the final. So with that, I went out too fast, as I always do. But then, instead of dropping off like I'd normally do, something in me body just said, you know, just say I'm going to keep this up for. And it was a big shock when I broke the world record in the heat because I thought the clock had broke. And it was just seeing random things. I just thought, that's a big baby. Can't be a world record. And I only really realized in the afternoon. And then um, in the finals, on the night, I was also quite nervous because I, I just didn't want to disappoint anybody by not doing a, a big a race again, you know, and being impressive to everybody. And I just did, I was really nervous that I was going to disappoint everyone. So going into the finals, it was a lot more serious, a lot more head down, just focus, just block everything out, come up with me hood up, you know, and then just try my best in the race. Well, it's been exciting, sleepless, but exciting. I mean, I, when I say I've not got any sleep, I've literally only got about an hour and eight at the minute, and then um, I had to keep checking my medal was real because I thought I was dreaming and seeing all this about my golden post box and the stamps on my face on them and having to go back to all this mayhem in Newcastle it's going to be quite amazing and I'm looking forward to handling all that. One time I fell asleep before early morning training at about half four on the sofa and that, that's never happened before. I'd normally be awake, doing everything downstairs, just getting everything ready, waiting for my mum to take us to training, you know. But I fell asleep and then about a week later I got weird at the gym, the AIS gym, and I had lost five kilograms in weight over a period of a month. And then that was really worrying because I had actually started eating more in the past year. So my diet had changed for the better, but I was actually losing a substantial amount of weight. And then I went for blood tests at the hospital and thanks to me being a British woman, it was sorted out quite quickly. And I was just getting ready for swimming one day and they said, rang us up and said, if you swim again, you'll have a heart attack. And apparently the bottom line of it was my readings were so off the scale they couldn't understand how I was able to get out of bed every morning, let alone do what I had done because I didn't let me train and suffer because of it. But then they put us on some radio therapy treatment. I was out of the water for a bit of that, but I was very lucky. I was so lucky to have an illness that would be cured so easily. beforehand of this competition and uh, through the warden camp leading up to this competition I think without that support of Mick Massey the coach there, Andy Scanlon one of the coaches there, Nick Larrowley the physiologist there and John Fox, Matt Walker, all the swimmers there helping us along, pacing us, giving us good advice Without all them, I wouldn't have been able to do what I had done, you know.